Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. In manufacturing, it's not just about the average cost of the product, it's also about the incremental cost of an additional unit. In fact, if you have a product with almost unlimited demand, then it's all about reducing the incremental cost of the next unit and then making more of these lower cost units. In economics, the marginal cost of production is the change in total production cost that comes from producing one additional unit. Perhaps the cost to produce 50,000 Model Ys a month is $2 billion. But then if Tesla wanted to make 50,000 and one Model Ys, the total cost might then come to $2 billion and $30,000. The extra cost was $30,000 to produce one additional Model Y. Yet the first 50,000 units had a total cost of $2 billion, which is an average of $40,000 per vehicle. Tesla's average cost per vehicle is $40,000, but marginal cost of an additional unit is just $30,000, 25% less cost. If Tesla sold this Model Y for $60,000, then Tesla would average 33% gross margin per vehicle. However, when Tesla increased the run rate, then any additional units will carry a much higher profit. Now, of course, I don't know these exact numbers, but I would say we're close. You see, I recently calculated an estimated loss for the new factories, and it got me thinking. All these vehicles are going to be losing money. There eventually comes a point when the production speed will be fast enough to break even. Then, eventually the factories will go into volume production and make some great profits. In other words, the more production speed increases, the higher the profit margin will become. So what is the additional profit from these vehicles once these go to high volume production? Admittedly, I don't actually know where this inflection point of profitability occurs. I'm trying to base it best on what we've seen in the past with ramping. The margins would likely resemble a logarithmic curve that looks similar to an S-curve, with profit margins increasing as quantity increases. So let's illustrate an example of what it would mean if Tesla ramped up their production higher. Using our previous example, if we had the first 50,000 units produced costing $2 billion, or an average of $40,000 each, and then say the next 50,000 cost just $30,000 each, then it would cost a total of $3.5 billion for 100,000 units. That means the average cost per vehicle has reduced from $40,000 to $35,000. And average margins have gone from 33% all the way to 42%. And remember, at this stage in Tesla's growth, all that additional gross profit is pretty much felt at operating profit too. But hang on, Tesla's monthly capacity is more around 50,000, not 100,000. Well, Tesla are about to reach close to an 800,000 a year run rate just for Model Ys in Shanghai when that new line is upgraded. Given that the factory is using old, for lack of a better word, manufacturing techniques, then I would say the new state-of-the-art up-to-date facilities in Texas and Berlin should be able to reach a much higher run rate However, I also expect that Shanghai run rate to keep increasing too, and could possibly hit 1 million a year there soon enough. We need to get our heads around the fact that these factories do not have actual capacities. They will keep expanding, even if it means taking the lines down or building expansions. Anyway, 100,000 a month is not impossible. I think, however, when we do reach about that rate, the majority of the economies of scale are being felt. Economies of scale isn't just about getting a better price for buying in bulk. It is present everywhere in business. And of course, if you can double the production speed of your line, then that's going to be some great economies of scale. Essentially, twice the output with just about the same resources. The same resources mean the same cost. Of course, it's likely as output does increase, costs do rise somewhat too. Tesla would likely need more staff attending to the production line if the speed was to double. But the point is, Tesla would not need twice as many staff on the line for twice as fast a run rate. But more or less the same robots, people and factory can handle a production line twice the rate to an extent. But as the run rate increases, the cost of each vehicle will diminish towards the cost of the materials for the product. Over time, the lines will become even more automated, more robots replacing humans. The energy will come from the sun. The cost of the vehicle will dwindle further and further. I think people are looking too short-sighted at times. Tesla's models are going to be around for decades. Tesla can spend all that time in getting the Model Y to be produced as fast and low cost as possible. Tesla have already started the framework of this in Texas with the 4680 sales. Elon talks about increasing production speed by 10 or 100 times faster. A lot of people think he was just talking about cell production, but it could have easily been inferred as manufacturing in general. Just think what the Giga Texas Model Y production line might be doing at the end of this decade. Seriously, give it some thought, imagine it. 
Picture how fast Tesla are making BEVs then. Tesla aren't stopping. There is no end in sight. It's always improving. It ends up creating one major virtuous circle. Tesla make vehicles with great profits now. These profits are reinvested back into the company to improve the value of the product and reduce the cost. This increased value adds to the demand. Prices rise, margins increase. Then the reduced cost increases margins further, thus resulting in even more profit to be reinvested back in again and again. Eventually, we're possibly left with a Model Y that might cost as little as something like $25,000 to build. Tesla could sell it for $50,000 and still clear 50% margin. Tesla's margins are here to stay no matter what. Even when demand may actually saturate at the current prices, then Tesla could reduce prices significantly and have all that demand back again. Tesla could even sell the Model Y at $30,000 and probably break even with operating income. They could then just decide to profit from FSD alone if they so chose. But the point is, at $30,000, what would Tesla's demand be then? It doesn't even need to be that low. $40,000 even. Where does it end? How much demand does Tesla need? How many Model Ys does Tesla want to make? Global demand for a $40,000 Model Y is possibly in excess of 10 million a year, at least when consumers understand the full benefits and value of EVs. Remember, if Tesla make more money on FSD subscription than gross margin of the vehicle sale, then it's best to get as many drivers in a Tesla as possible. Perhaps a more similar business model to Gillette and Razor's. All the money is made in the blades as their consumable items. Therefore, the Razor is sold at a loss in order to encourage customers to use the blades. I'm not saying that Tesla needs to even sell the Model Y at a loss. I'm just saying there may be more long-term profit for Tesla by lowering the price. I mean, it would probably end up being a more lower range rear-wheel drive LFP version or something anyway. Obviously, when you can reduce the cost of manufacturing your product this much, it really helps build some great business strategies. So just imagine how tough this would make it for the competition. They can't even make EVs for the price Tesla can sell them at now. Imagine what would happen if Tesla started selling their EVs at cost. Perhaps we need to work on a new label for the so-called competition. I still don't see any that have a path to profitability. Anyway, this is what Tesla's high volume production will mean for the company. It's going to be interesting to see just how fast Tesla can get these production lines and the eventual margin that will come from it. So much of the future of this company depends on its speed as to which it can manufacture. Tesla have so many batteries and cars to make. They're doing their best to try and find the fastest processes possible of getting stuff out of the ground and into a finished product. In reality, it is still very much early days with Tesla. They've only just built their first product ever this year. Their first machine that builds the machine. Sure, it's faced its share of challenges already, but it's one outstanding machine. And soon we're gonna see what it is actually capable of and will likely serve as a recipe for Tesla's future success. It will take time to reach volume production, but once there, we'll see Tesla exceed that rate and we'll see auto gross margins that will start to even compete with Ferrari. Yet unlike Ferrari, Tesla will be the most sold car in the world. Tesla's margins are only getting better and there is no reason for any of that to stop. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.